I had a nice little chat with somebody yesterday. Um, somebody that people have been waiting for me to interview. I had the opportunity to interview Ryan Kelly with Ecuador Shores Realty. He's probably, I would say he is the premier uh, real estate developer or real estate brokerage firm here in Monte. He's been here for nine years. He knows Monta inside and out. He knows all about development. He knows all about uh, what's for sale here and pricing and demographics and all that good stuff. Uh, when I come back, I'm going to show you the interview that we had yesterday. Hey! Hello there. Good to see you here today. I've, I've been trying to get this interview with you for months, and I know we run into each other all the time. Well, in, in the grocery stores, and usually most people bump into me in the beer and wine section, but you're always in the vegetables and <laughs> those sections. So we're well, happy but, to be here. Absolutely, yeah. It's been good. We've definitely planned it for a while, but it's good. Yeah. Good How long have you actually been in Monta doing? what you're doing right now. Oh my goodness, so we've been living here going on nine years. Um, and we opened up the real estate company soon after we moved here for the first time, so yeah. Did you come here with the intent of getting into this business? No idea. See, I didn't, I didn't come here with the intent of being yeah. a YouTuber either. No, if, I tell everybody, if somebody would have told me 10 years ago that we would open up and, and have the biggest expat realty company on the coast of Monta, I'd be like, yeah, right. But no, it's, but, it's been a blessing. Now, in the States, were you in real estate? No, um, I had already. I was always wanted to get into real estate, but the problem in the states is that every other person you meet is a realtor, so it was highly competitive. Um, and this is just something that just kind of fell into our laps. We did some different, uh, you know, investing down here, and yeah, it just kind of took on a life of its own. And that's all you've done since you've been here. All we've done since I've been here. Yep. So I know there's a lot of new development going on in Monta. A lot of people from watching my channel and talking to people, even in the United States. Everybody knows about the damage that the earthquake did in 2016 here. Right. Mm -hmm. And which opened up the doors for lots of new development. I know that it's been a little slow in coming, but I see now, just in the time that I've been here, which has been a year, mm -hmm. that new stuff is coming up. Correct. Like sprouting out of the ground. Let's talk about that for a minute. I know there's this, the big place, Bay. What's uh, it? Grand Bay Monta. Grand Bay Monta. That's the four tower project. That's yeah. the four tower project. It's right on the, is it right on it's the water? It's right on the water. Yeah. It, it's a one of a kind. Nothing has ever been done like that along the coast at, to that scale. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a completely one off project. It's going to be amazing. And it's all condos? And all condos. All condos. They're going to have shopping there by? So what the developer did is he actually secured the property just behind it that's actually on the main thoroughfare. So you kind of take a little jaunt off the main road and that takes you back into the development itself. But he also secured the, the frontage as well back towards the road. So he's talking about doing um, additional commercial project in there that'll just make life even easier for everybody who lives at Grand Bay. Right. Yeah, Grand Bay is going to be an amazing project. Has um, anybody all the different amenities? Has anybody talked about pricing yet? Yeah, so there's going to have pretty much something for every budget. Pricing is going to run um, from like the the high 100s to over 700. So it really depends upon what you're looking for, how much space you're looking for, um, the frontage side, everything else. But one of the other cool things about that particular project is that everybody will have an ocean view. It doesn't matter because of the, at the angles of the towers, it doesn't matter if you're on the front or the back side, whatever, you're going to be able to see the ocean. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice little feature. Everybody's going to have a view of the ocean. That's, mm -hmm. That is a big And everybody has floor to ceiling windows, everybody has a balcony, so it's going to be nice. And it's, it's price where expats can afford it. Certainly. It, it. There's there's a market for everybody there. There's a market for everybody. So there. what about this other place called Scorpion? Scor Scorpios. Scorpios. Scorpios, okay. Scorpios, yeah. Scorpios is, it's very different from Grand Bay Monta. I always say that Grand Bay Monta and Scorpios are two of the newest luxury projects that are coming into the area. But they're also very different. The, the luxurious side of it, they're definitely equal. They're going to be absolutely gorgeous. But while Grand Bay Monta is more of that resort style community, there's going to be like over 340 condos within the project. So it's going to be a lot to be able to see and do. A lot of people milling about and hanging out and easy to make new friends there. Scorpios is going to be the exact opposite. It's a single tower. There's only 29 condos in the entire structure. Structure. So it's going to be a much more exclusive type of a project where you know you might be the only person to pull down that uh, down there that day. So explain this to me, Ryan. Mm -hmm. there, I, I've been told that 
that some of the floors are going to be, the whole floor is going to be a, a unit. Yeah. Is that just part of the building or is it? So that's the, that's the top half though. of the building. Yeah. The so top half of the building. Right. So when Carlos Garcia, the developer, brought this to me last year and he literally you know, sent me with the original plans, that's the first couple things I asked him. I said, so wait a second, is that a glass elevator? He's like, yeah, it's a glass elevator. So that's the first all the way up the side of the building. And then I immediately noticed those big four bedrooms that take up the entire level. So I said, the four bedrooms, is that really the entire level? 360 degree views. And he's like, exactly. I'm like, wow, that's gonna be unbelievable. Now the four bedrooms start at the 11th floor. Okay. So there's again, 21 stories total. So from the 11th floor to the 20th are the big four bedrooms. Okay. So they're gonna have 360 degree views, three quarter wraparound terraces. And I think four you bedrooms, told four me and the other bath. day, they're gonna be like 3,000 square feet. Almost 3,000 square feet. They're gonna be huge. That's a nice size condo. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a castle in the sky, yeah. <laughs> So what else? What else is being moved? There's, there's um, yes, yeah, so you have Scorpios, you get Grand Bay Manta, uh, Riva de Mari is finishing DeMar. up. Yeah, Riva de Mari is here at the top of the hill. Yeah. Um, that has been a really big you know, winner amongst the expat community because of the fact that the views are simply unparalleled. You know, you're at the southern end of Manta, you're right there behind um, uh, La Quadra, the shopping center. And the benefit to being at that location is that especially the higher up you go in the building, your views aren't just out over the open ocean, but you look out over the entire city of Manta. Yeah. So during the day, you see everything. You see the mounts of the Monte Cristo off the distance. And then at night, it's a completely different world because everything lights up. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah, it's a really yeah. nice project. As well. I don't want to mention any names because of anonymity, but one of my channel subscribers is buying one of those units in Riva de Mar, and I think he's buying it from you. Very well so, could be. Yeah, um, we've yeah. sold over 20% of that building, so yeah, that's good. Yeah, it, it's been an amazing project. Yeah. So, how so the the coast runs up? Believe it or not, it, the coast here for the people that don't know it. When you're down on a beach and you're looking out over the ocean, and you're looking due north. So the coast Correct. runs east and west. So. To a point, and then it to goes north. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because if you look at the coastline, it kind of comes down, and then Mata kind of comes out yeah. and curves back under. So yeah, Mata's kind of facing about northwest. Okay, yeah. so north of Mata, going up the coastline, mm -hmm. and then of course then we have going south the other way, are two completely different, uh, I guess, demographics maybe, mm -hmm. I, you know. Absolutely. How, as far as development is concerned, where do you think most of the development is going to be? Is it going to be? Is there going to be more development up the coastline and down the coastline, or is it all just going to be right here in Monta? For the foreseeable future, we see everything coming into Monta as far as the newer luxury towers and developments, even the housing projects and whatnot. Um, like getting into um, you know Ciudad de Mar, Marina Blue, which are two of the nicer gated communities right there on the ocean. Yeah. There's a bunch of new homes being built in there, duplexes, condo buildings, um, and so we see just the whole area just continue to to boom, quite frankly. There's right. still some of the, the beachfront lots are still available, um, and that's what all the developers are now looking at. They're looking okay. to come in, and of course now with the, the airport getting ready to come online, developers are eyeballing it even more. So it's gonna be good. That's great. So let's talk about Bahia for a second. Okay. Just for a short second. No problem. I went to Bahia a while back. I actually did a video about it, and I expressed, uh, well, I said I wouldn't live there. <laughs> and and the only reason why is because of the severe damage from the earthquake that hasn't been repaired. Mm -hmm. When I was there, and when we went across the bay and looking back across the bay over at Bahia, it reminded me of looking at Miami. <clears throat> you know, beautiful white structures and everything. But then when you get into Bahia and get down there, you see a lot of those buildings are vacated or they're then abandoned, abandoned because mm -hmm. of the damage from the earthquakes. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about Bahia, but do you think they will do something about that? Do well, you think there'll be new development in Bahia that will replace those buildings? That's a good question. So for us, I'm really not 100% sure. Obviously, it's a little bit outside of our radius. Anybody who's looking for that area, we have representatives and brokers all over the country, good, reputable people that we can be able to uh, refer you guys to. Um, but as far as Bahia itself, the main thing that I heard as far as what happened with them in the earthquake was that a lot of the buildings, they weren't fully insured. They relied on the owners to insure their specific conduct. Their Some space, of them yeah. looked at that as well, why do I need somebody on insurance where we don't have earthquakes here? And we just got hit, you know? I mean, the, the earthquake prior to that was like 70 years prior. So I kind of like it as living in California. You know, you get tremors every now and then, it's about it. But that's kind of what I saw about Bahia. Um, and so, especially with how big Mata is looking to get over the next few years, 
either it could be a good thing with Bahia because that's like the closest, you know, bigger city to the north, or it could just take away even more from Bahia because more and more people will come down here and they're like, hey, I want to live in Monta proper. I want to be on restaurant row and I want to be able to walk to the mall and walk to all these beautiful shops and restaurants and things to do. Or they'll choose an area like Santa Marinita. Yeah. Which is a little bit more rural, but you're only 15 minutes away from all the creature comforts. And that's so, south of Monta. South, yeah, by about 15 minutes. Correct. I noticed one thing when we were talking about Riva de Mar. I noticed a couple weeks ago I was down in San Mateo, and you can actually see Riva de Mar on the horizon. Oh, yeah. So, I was, so, so earlier today, I was with clients in Santa Marinita, literally coming back. We yeah. come up over the hill to exit Santa Marinita, and at the top, you could literally see Riva de Mar off the distance. Yeah. I mean, you could see that building for miles. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're building like luxury homes are going to be all around that property as well, because it's all kind of terraced up. So people look at, look at luxury homes, that's going to be a nice thing to build. Yeah, so in the also. future is not just condos, not just high rise condos, but yeah. there are going to be some houses, housing developments, you know. Correct. Uh, what about apartment complexes? Now, when I'm saying apartment complexes, as you know, you the like United States. Com apartment like, complexes. Like what? Like, like back home apartment complexes. Yeah. Like where they'll have like several buildings. Where you, you see like 3,000 apartments on one piece of property. Yeah. You know, you know I have, and, that's a great question. I've never really seen that around here. Um, the closest thing to that would be more like the Ecuadorian style track home. Um, because they're relatively inexpensive. Like you can find those for 75K. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really seen an apartment complex. And I'm not sure why. It might just be because like the rental market for that isn't strong amongst mm -hmm. the local uh, community, or it could be that with the local banking and what locals could be able to buy a track home for, the banks are loaning money on that kind of stuff. So they're just getting one of those instead. So, sure. sure. Yeah. Not really okay. Sure so you touched on something there that a lot of people ask me about financing. Mm -hmm. Is it done here? It's done, <laughs> it's done if you're a local. Yeah. Um, so, so cash is king. Cash is definitely king. Absolutely. It's the majority of our business. Um, okay. Just simple wire transfers. Don't show up with a brief. Yeah. Does he not? I'm not going to talk to you. I know, that's a whole other video. Yeah, that's a whole other video. Yeah, no, don't show up with a don't show up with a briefcase full of money. Um, but no, in all seriousness, so financing is going to be where it, I won't say it's impossible to get it, but it's near impossible. And I tell everybody the same thing. Even if you can get financing. Odds are you don't want it because they're running like ten expensive. percent, maybe even eleven. So what most of our clients do who are looking for financing is either one, they'll work seller for, or we we will help work seller financing with a seller, whether it's a personal seller and they'll yeah, there you extend go. a little bit of time frame. Because some people come down, they're like, well, hey, I want to get this house or condo, but I still need to sell my other home back home. Um, you know, can you give me six months to make sure I sell it and close and everything else? Sure. And a lot of times they'll go, yeah, sure, give do me you, deposit, we'll let that happen. Do you get any owners that will offer to sell their properties for owner finance? Yeah, that's exactly I mean, that's it. What so, you're Oh, yeah, God. so there's a good point and a bad point to that. So mm -hmm. the, the bad news to it is they generally want to get paid quickly. Like yeah. they'll, they'll give you a few months to sell your sure, home and, and get yeah. paid on that and then transfer the money. Um, but usually about 12 months is the longest that we've ever had somebody go out on that. Usually it's about three to six months on the average. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that I have yet to have any seller that has offered that kind of thing that has charged interest. Yeah. They've all been kind of like, hey, it's a handshake deal. Say, you know what, you're going to buy my place. I'm going to give you time to sell your place. Not a problem at all. Yeah. We'll just work together. Um, and then, of course, we have the new construction projects that are coming into town and any future construction projects. They're all doing 0% financing. Their attitude is like, hey, if, 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 we're gonna, if, we're gonna, if you're going to buy it through us, then we're not going to charge you to buy it. So if you buy a condo for 300 at the end of the day, it's going to cost you 300, 300. Um, And they'll give you generally financing throughout the course of the build. Sure. So most builders will do 10, 20, 30% down. They'll do either monthly payments or for a lot of foreigners that have to run the bank every month. Um, um, they'll say, hey, pay us quarterly or do a payment in six months or something like that. Yeah. And then you, you always save a little reserve for the end. So you don't pay for everything up front and then just hope it gets finished. You Generally, builders will say, hey, we're going to hold back 10 or 20 percent. And you make that final payment at the end. Once you do your walkthrough, you do your, your punch list, and it's all good. Then they're ready to move in. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think the new income requirements that the visa process is is that going to have any effect on your business? No, I mean it's still cheaper than Mexico and every other place that yeah, you've ever heard. Yeah. I mean it's, it's just Mexico it's just, is like it's, it's, yeah, it's like other people are raising and you know Ecuador is still cheap. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those beautiful things. Yeah. Uh, it just yeah. continues to be able to push. I mean that's one. I did a video months ago, and it, it, actually it's one of the most popular videos I've done. It's got the most viewership. It's over thirty thousand views. 
which is a lot for me. But yeah. uh, but one of the top questions that I've talked about, one of the reasons why I told people the reason why I moved to Ecuador is because of affordability. And Absolutely. it still is true today. Even Very after affordable. all the new development, there's it's still going to be affordable living here and affordable yes. housing. Mm -hmm. So, And Ecuador Shores is going to be here to... We're going to be here for a week to sell them. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we aren't going anywhere. So, um, yeah. so let's talk about a sensitive subject, okay? Fire away. You almost said the word right there. I thought you said fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, and, and I, I, I know that you're the right person to talk to about this because I'm sure you have some good insight on it. These beautiful neighborhoods, like the one that we're in right here, we're mm -hmm. here. This neighborhood is called Barbecue. 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 Yeah, Barbecue. Yeah. yeah, we're kind of like in the wealthiest part of the city. Yeah. Um, Puerto del Sol is across the street. They got million dollar homes in there. I've had several, not several, but a few of my subscribers say that they came here and they stayed, uh, did an Airbnb and, you know, in the Poseidon or in the Wyndham, and they mm -hmm. talked about the weekend party noise. Right. It's like, so my question that I've asked somebody is that if the developers want to come in here and develop mm -hmm. these beautiful properties, is anybody going to do anything about the party noise on the weekends? So it actually depends upon where you are. It's a great question because it's something we talk openly about with our, with our uh, clients. Because right. a lot of people come in and they're like, hey, I can sleep through a train. I don't care where I'm at. I just mm -hmm. want a nice view. And other people are like, I'm a super light sleeper. I got to get something super tranquilo, super quiet. So there's going to be different buildings that are going to be better for you than others. Because again, depending upon what you guys want. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain buildings where, yeah, they're, they're party buildings, especially on the weekends. You know, there's people that come in. It's Ecuador. They love their music. They love to have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, like it loud <laughs> and they, they can like it loud sometimes yeah um, but there's also other neighborhoods that are right on the coast where it's actually relatively quiet yeah where my neighborhood is. Like exactly my absolutely is yeah you know my neighborhood as well you know sometimes you know we might have somebody that you know has a quinceanera or there's a birthday party and they bring in a band or something and you'll hear it till 11 you know but it's it's really like a non-event and again it's just depending upon where you're at certain areas of town are going to be a little bit more noisy especially on some of the weekends so it's just literally i mean we'd be more than happy to talk to anybody and kind of steer you in the right direction about hey where's good for quietness and where's good if you don't mind something like that right. um but what some of the developers are now doing is they're actually upping their their like for example like they're sliding glass doors and windows a lot of these newer developers are coming in and they're using like the really nice pvc route. building in soundproofing yeah yeah so yeah. now instead of doing like a basic aluminum where you can kind of hear a little bit more through it they'll do that big pvc wrapped vinyl mm -hmm. windows and doors yeah. and that definitely helps with deadening the sound so that's something else that we would be able to say mm -hmm. hey yeah hey this building's doing that this is going to help you out kind of right okay last question i i have this thing this term that i use the costa rica effect okay that happened to costa rica costa rica i remember when i first started looking at retirement abroad uh, 11 years ago, mm -hmm. Costa Rica was hot. Oh, yeah. And it was like the place to go. I've and been then, nine times. Yeah. I <laughs> took my first trip in 91. Really? So okay. absolutely. I remember Hako Beach when it was nothing but the sure. best western and a gravel road. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then it developed so much and then it became very oh, wow. expensive and mm -hmm. it, it kind of slowed down as a favorite destination. So what are your thoughts about that happening to Monta? Do you think that could happen here? I think eventually it could happen here just as, as the population continues to grow around the world and you know places like this are more and more discovered as being able to come in and they can go, hey, I can get this condo that would cost me 800000 in Costa Rica or one and a half mil in Cocoa Beach, Florida, um, but I can get it here for three hundred. dollars right. And I think that as more and more people come into that, obviously it's real estate, you know, supply and demand. The more people come in, it can easily raise the values. But that being said, I think that we have a ways to go before that happens. Okay. You know, I mean, I remember Costa Rica 20 years ago, yeah. you know, and I don't see Monta doing that tomorrow. So I definitely think we're still at the very ground floor of this. I think as the airport comes online, as newer things come in line, more businesses and services come into the city, I think it'll just continue to be a beautiful life. And yeah. people that are coming in within the next several years, I think uh, as far as even an investment project and things like that, um, especially thinking about retirement in the future, the next five years, a lot of people are looking at it for that because Good. they've been to Costa Rica. They've looked at Belize and Panama and the islands and everything. Um, and they're more and more they're choosing Ecuador. And for the coast, they're obviously choosing Monta because of that. Of course, we could sit here and talk for hours talking about why people would come to Ecuador. 
I, I don't think that it's 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 not a hard sell anymore. It's it's pretty easy to get people, yeah, to come here. Uh, when if if people want to come here and buy a nice property like you see these pictures of here, obviously they need to come to Ecuador Shores, right? Absolutely. So <laughs> of course. So why? Um. Wow, that's a great question. Um, I gotta say there, there's- stuck you, man. I know, you kinda <laughs> stuck me there every night. Um, so honestly, I'd say there's several different factors. For starters, we're gonna say the good and the bad. So for example, like you might come in and, and you know there could be some people that they'll only give you the sugar-coated effects and all the positivity, but they won't tell you anything negative about something. Uh, we're the kind of company where if you tell us about a certain building, for example, the noise, and you say, hey, I'm a super light sleeper, but I really like this building, is that gonna be good for me? I'm not gonna say yes. I'm gonna say, well, it's a beautiful building, but on the downside, Friday and Saturday nights, you have a nightclub over here, or you got cars that pull in this parking lot here, it, it could make some noise for you, so I want you to be fully aware of that. Sure. Um, so that's gonna be one of the main things. Uh, the other main thing is that we, we operate this business just like back home in North America. We work well with other brokers in the area, so we're gonna be able to help you out, not only with the stuff that we represent, but anything that you might find on another website. By all means, please contact us, say, hey, I was looking at this with so-and-so, what do you think about this? Be more than happy to be able to help right. you. We can even help you negotiate and everything else. Um, the other thing is the fact that from the very beginning, we've set this up very differently. Again, this is a beautiful office, not to, mm -hmm. not to say, you know, pat ourselves on the back, but nobody else has an office like this, right. especially on the expat side. We're the only ones. Um, we have basically taken the lion's share of the market because of honesty, because of our ethics, and because of our service. We want to make sure that when people come in, they're treated like family. Because the biggest thing for us is we want to be able to see you anywhere in town and get a hug, yeah. at least a handshake. <laughs> you know, I don't want tomatoes whizzing by my yeah. head as I tell people. Um, so we always, always want to make sure that people Down are the happy. Produce aisle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we always want to make sure that people are happy. Sure, um, sure. You know, we are the most recommended. Another we are thing the too, I got to put in, I, for that. I, yeah. I got to put a plug in for you too. I happen to know. Uh, a couple uh, rental agents here in town, mm -hmm. and they have both, several of them have told me that that if you have a client that you can't really can't find a piece of property for them, or, and they just insist on renting, that you you work with those other rental absolutely, agents and, absolutely, and you guys work. I've seen this happen. I watched you and Stella Coulter work together on a on a Stella's piece of property. Great. There's a lot to be said about this community spirit where everybody works Definitely. together for the greater good. So. Absolutely. We tell people all the time. I mean, we get free advice. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's nothing that, that we're going to be able to personally help you out with and quote unquote make a profit or, or get a commission mm -hmm. or something like that, we still want you to have good service. So regardless, I mean, right. I tell people all the time, I don't care if it's real estate. I don't care if you want to know where the best pizza, pizza is, uh, where yeah. to buy a refrigerator, who to talk to for rentals, yeah. um, to stay at. We're going to be, you know, and that's also okay. a big benefit of having been here for nine years. Correct. So yeah, yeah we're going to know everything. And if we don't know, we're going to find out who does. I'm the first one to say, if I don't know the answer, I'm not going to go, hmm, let me think about what I can yeah. Yeah. throw at you. I'm going to say, hey, let me find out about that and I'll get back to you. Okay. So your business is Ecuador Shores Realty. I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I appreciate that. Uh, and plus people will see, they're seeing right now, they're seeing in the video, the little logo here. Right, uh, right. Yep. That's you don't see it in here, but it's going to be in the video. It'll be on the video. We'll see it, yeah. Yeah. over here. It's, oh, it's like right here. So, <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. I, it's been tough getting in here to to see you because I know our schedules have been kind of like yeah. all over the place yeah. together. Yeah, absolutely. You were in Quanker for a little bit and yeah, had I some was, fun out yeah. there, and yeah. So yeah. yeah, but I appreciate your time, my friend. And anytime. good luck to you. Thank you very much, and everybody. When you come to Monta, Ecuador Shores, we that's appreciate the place it. to go. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we're right. happy to help. All right, good. We'll cut it off there. You got it. <laughs>